six on the Talk of Chicago 1690 WVO, and this is America's Heroes Group uh, Roundtable with partner Chicago Regional Office Veterans Benefits Administration. And we're going to talk about something that is uh, extremely interesting that a lot of people uh, certainly aren't totally aware of, and that's why we like to uh, let people know about about it. We have um, some topics that are very interesting. We have some panelists that are going to be talking about uh, eight. We just talked about something that a lot of folks weren't aware of. Now we're going to talk about some more. Uh, on our live line, uh, we have Anna M. Barron, Acting Dir- Director, Chicago Regional Office of Veteran Benefits Administration. Uh, also, John Pennington, retired U.S. Army officer, veteran, and Assistant Veterans Service Center Manager for Chicago VBA Regional Office. And John Hugel, who is a U.S. Army medic, veteran, and decision review officer for the Chicago VBA Regional Office. And uh, we are certainly pleased to have them. Um, up, up next, uh, the discussion is changes in blue water Navy claims. And a lot of people are not really aware of about the, the blue water Navy claims, and it's extremely important. Uh, let's go to uh, John Pennington. How are you, sir? John, I'm doing great. How are you doing, sir? Good, John. Thank you so much. And also Anna McBaron. Uh, Anna, how are you today? I'm doing good, Cliff. Glad to be with you again. Good, absolutely glad to be with you. Uh, Anna, let's go right with you. And uh, Oh, Jeff is with us, too. I didn't know he was with us. Jeff Hugo yes, is with us. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Mr. Kelly. How are you good, today? Good, 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 good. We've got the three of you here. This is great. A lot of good information. Okay, who wants to start? Well, Cliff, I think we'll let Jeff start. He's our resident expert on the Blue Water Navy, so okay. um, he can give us some good information uh, about right. um, the changes in the law and how that works. That's great. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, Anna. Um, as mentioned, uh, the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act of 2019 went into effect on January 1st of 2020, and What the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act does is basically redefines how the VA uh, determines and considers uh, Agent Orange affected Vietnam veterans. Uh, In the past, we only conceded uh, Agent Orange exposure to veterans who actually set foot on Vietnam soil or those who traveled up the inland waterways. Uh, For example, some uh, a a navy veteran who was stationed off the coast of vietnam even you know a half mile or a mile would not have gotten the same presumed agent orange exposure under past regulations and so again what public law uh, Mm 116-23 or the blue water navy vietnam veterans act does is that it extends the presumption of agent orange exposure to any naval veteran who may have served 12 nautical miles off the coast of Vietnam. And uh, when, I, when I speak to people about this, I, I always tell them try, the best way to think of this is looking at the country of Vietnam, try to think of a highlighted area, just 12 nautical miles in a zone, so to speak, off the coast. If you are a veteran who served on a ship uh, that went into that area at any point in time between January 9th of 1962 and May the 7th of 1975, the VA considers you to have been exposed to Agent Orange just like any uh, Vietnam veteran who actually set foot on Vietnam uh, soil. So uh, what it does is it increases the number of men and women who Uh, potentially could be entitled to Agent Orange-related disability benefits with the VA. Uh, Try to imagine all the hundreds of thousands of ships that Mm -hmm. operated in that 12 nautical mile zone, uh, but, you know, in a a period of time of more than 13 years. You know, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of ships and thousands upon thousands of uh, naval veterans 
who would then uh, or, or are now under this new law uh, it, it considered to be exposed to Agent Orange. It really makes a, a, a big difference, doesn't it? How, who wants to continue this? This is a very important situation. Well, I, I will piggyback on that as well. Yeah, this, uh, one of the mm -hmm. other parts of the uh, Vietnam Vet or Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act mm -hmm. is that it also expanded the time range uh, for Korean uh, DMZ uh, veterans. Uh, in the past, the the, the time frame uh, for what we considered Agent Orange use at the demilitarized zone in Korea was a, a much smaller time range. Now the uh, the new law has expanded that time frame, and I want to get those dates out there as well because uh, it, it runs from September 1st of 1967 to August 31st of 1971. So if you are a veteran who served at the Korean DMZ between September 1st of 1967 and August 31st of 1971, the VA also considers you to have been exposed to Agent Orange and, again, would open up uh, a whole host of uh, entitlements uh, for certain diseases uh, under the law. This is a great thing that this has come about, folks. How did this happen, and was it difficult to get the, uh, this law passed? Who wants to respond to that? Well, I'll just, Cliff, I'll just say yeah, that sure. over the years that, um, you know, as the, as the VA gathers more and more information about um, where Agent Orange was sprayed and how far it could travel in the air and those types of things, they've continued to expand um, the presumption of exposure for veterans um, that were, you know, in different areas. At first, you know, at first you had to... Um, have actually set foot in country in Vietnam, mm -hmm. and then they expanded it to the brown waterways, which are, you know, the lakes and streams that run through the country, and now we've expanded it to the blue water, you know, 12 miles off the coast. So um, as we gather more information about, um, you know, how widespread the use of um, the toxin was and then also, you know, how it traveled through the air, the VA makes these decisions. Which is a good thing, obviously. Do For sure. You, uh, absolutely. Do you think we're going to even see more exposure to this sort of thing? I think that that's always possible. Mm -hmm. You know, as we learn more and gather more information, that's always possible. <clears throat> yeah. Who, who else would like to respond to that? <clears throat> Well, Cliff, I, I had the opportunity to speak to one of the attorneys who helped uh, to draft H.R. 299, which was the, the House resolution before it became uh, what we know of as uh, Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act. And, you know, he was a Navy veteran himself, mm -hmm. and uh, it was fascinating to speak to him about this because he shared with me, you know, just the, the common sense thinking behind this. Um, you know, if you, if you think about it, these herbicides are constantly running off the off of the uh, mainland in Vietnam you know they're exiting the, uh, the the country through the rivers and then they're entering the ocean well the naval veterans off the coast didn't have uh, a great deal of fresh water <coughs> available to them mm -hmm. so they had ships that were filtering and uh, you know taking the salt out of the uh, the water for them to make it potable well it just stands to reason that if you have all of these herbicides running off of the uh, the land and into the oceans, that, that you know they they weren't filtering for herbicides and and dioxin and things of that nature. So of course that you know the water that they were drinking and then bathing in uh, on the ships, you know, as it was uh, filtered by these other ships, you know, that they would be exposed to it in that manner. So you know, I, I at first I had some questions about you know the you know, how do you come up with the, the 12 nautical miles? But as he explained it to me, it, it made a great deal of sense because these guys, uh, these veterans off the coast, you know, they were exposed to it in much the same way that, you know, they were drinking it. They were, uh, it was in the ocean water uh, that was then filtered and, uh, you know, the salt was taken out of it. But, you know, they didn't remove any of the toxins. And so uh, it, it made a great deal of sense after talking to him about it. Interesting, very interesting. Our call-in number, I'm sure there are some people who have questions about this. 
The WVON call-in number is 312-374-8130. Uh, do we have a caller, Robert? Hello, Cliff. Hey, Robert. How are you? Okay, this is my second time calling about Thailand. I'm in Thailand in 67 November to 69. They spray Agent Orange in Thailand, Karat, and Ryan KP over there, where we was. And they they have made to the Thailand now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I like to know, I know they might say they did. I asked a number of times about it. They said no. And I was in a transport coming back from Vietnam, come back from Thailand, and we still on the ground a while picking up bodies in Vietnam, you know. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Can you answer that? Anybody, can can anybody uh, help Robert understand He's talking about Thailand? And our, well, I, well I can, Robert, I will just say this, that, uh, that so far that um, – a presumption of exposure in Thai, in Thailand has not been established by the Secretary of VA. However, if you have specific documentation in your military records that show that you were exposed to the toxin Agent Orange, we can still establish that connection. Okay. Someone else was going to respond to it, and to to big, piggyback on what Anne just this? mentioned, this? Uh, th- this is Jeff. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, uh, Jeff. Mm-hmm. To piggyback what Anna just mentioned, uh, you know, we do those cases in Thailand on a facts found basis. You know, we have to actually corroborate and uh, on a case by case basis determine if uh, the individual uh, was exposed to Agent Orange. But she's absolutely correct. There is no blanket presumption. Uh, just because you were in uh, Thailand that uh, you were exposed to Agent Orange. Mm-hmm. So we, those cases are still a, a case-by-case basis or what we call a facts-found basis. We have to determine, uh, did your duties at uh, whatever Air Force base you may have been at in Thailand, did that bring you into uh, close proximity with the perimeter where uh, the tactical herbicides were being used? So, uh, again, for, for Air Force bases, in Thailand, uh, those determinations of Agent Orange exposure are made on a, a case-by-case, uh, facts-found basis. Are we getting a lot? Do we hear a lot about that or not? Uh, we, we see quite a few claims uh, uh-huh. in terms of uh, claims for Agent Orange-related disabilities uh, based upon service in, in Thailand. In Thailand. Uh, the Royal Thai Air Force bases. Hmm. And, and there's, there's there's been no grants though. Or oh yes, yes, I, I've processed oh, many all, grants oh, myself. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. it's it's not the easiest thing to do as far as uh, you know determining on a case by case basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know the documentation is usually there, and, and many times uh, these veterans have service which would most certainly have brought them to the perimeter of these air force bases, like security patrol. Uh, security police jobs, you know, obviously those individuals would have been uh, at the perimeters of the base uh, on on multiple occasions, uh, which would have brought them into close proximity with uh, the tactical herbicides that were used. And and for everyone out there, the tactical herbicides were basically used to uh, clear and kill foliage, so that yeah, right. they could see that so that they could see the enemy. Right. Uh, and certainly, you know, the, there was a lot of usage at the uh, uh, base perimeters um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. out there. So, you know, security police uh, obviously would have been exposed to that sure. uh, just based on their, their duties. How many, did you, you folks are really, I guess, to really uh, up on what's going on here, what might still remain. Do we have any idea how many more claims are going to be made relative to this sort of thing? Anybody well, we're hoping that by getting the word out that there will be more claims. Um, You're hoping there obviously. will be more. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as quantifying it, I, I wouldn't yeah. even want to hazard a guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, the whole point of this, and, and we've been doing, uh, you know, uh, town hall meetings at Jesse Brown, at Heinz, at North Chicago VA Medical Centers, uh, just to try and get the word out that, you know, this change in the law is going to open up uh, a potential for entitlement for, for many 
living veterans as well as their surviving uh, uh, spouses. Uh, so the goal here is to just get the word out. And if they have any inclination or any thought that uh, they may have been exposed or uh, for surviving spouses who feel or believe that their husbands are surviving or that their uh, that their veterans uh, may have been exposed, they they really just need to contact us and get the ball rolling as far as filing a claim. I I think the VA should be commended relative to reaching out, trying to get uh, individuals to understand that they could be claims made for themselves or others. Is that, is that correct to all of you? Absolutely. And, and I yeah. want to thank you for giving us the platform here today uh, on a Saturday afternoon. I mean, you know, we, we, we've done a lot, I think, in terms of, you know, sending letters to veterans to get the word out. Uh, like I said, doing town halls at the VA medical centers, but uh, any vehicle that we can uh, utilize to get the word out, uh, your radio show being another one, uh, is is greatly appreciated. So I want to thank you for, for giving us this opportunity to get the word out in another uh, vehicle. Thank you so much. Anytime we can do this, this is what this show is about, obviously, and with folks like yourselves who are really experts on this in many, many ways. It uh, really helps a whole lot of people. Yeah, and Cliff, I would just yeah. like to say that sure. for anybody who, you know, thinks that they might fall into this category or knows that they fall into this category, but they're not sure where to start in filing a claim, um, our office at 2122 West Taylor Street is closed right now due to the um, COVID-19 pandemic, but sure. our 1-800 line, which is 1-800-827-1000, is open, and counselors are ready to take your call and help you get started with this. You can also find more information at va.gov. You can also, if you already have an e-benefits account, you can apply for um, a benefits related to this exposure on your e-benefits account um, but if you're just feel like you're lost and you don't and you don't know where to start that the best thing to do is call that 1-800 number and talk to a counselor and that again that number is 1-800-827-1000 that's great and that can start you on 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 the trip right sure yes yeah. that's, that's, that's a wonderful thing 1-800-827-1000 all right yeah, everything, you're, I'm glad you mentioned that because everything's obviously closed up right now. So. Yes, yeah. but we are, like I said, our yeah. call centers are open. They're taking yeah. calls. Um, they're helping veterans. If, if someone were to call in with an issue and it can't be resolved by one of the counselors answering the phone, they're putting an electronic inquiry into the system, and our folks are getting those. Um, I have... Two people that are coming into the office still processing mail. So if you're sending mail to us, it's still going to get to where it needs to go. Every other person in the office is working from home right now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. our folks that normally work our public contact unit and meet with veterans face-to-face -face are working at home. So if they get those inquiries, they can still handle those. So nothing about the services that we provide has stopped other than we're not seeing folks face to face right now, but we can do everything either online or by phone that we do in person. I think that's great information. That's that's wonderful. Between Anna, John, and Jeff, <laughs> you folks, things are being taken care of, right? That's right. That's yeah. the number one thing. Yes, Take sir. care of our veterans. That's, that's right. what we're here for. That's right, and you're doing a great job doing it. Uh, and I'll ask a few minutes, what, what else do we need? What, you folks have just uh, got so much information. What else do we need to know? Um, one of the things that I want to stress right now in the mm -hmm. current situation is sure. that, you know, don't, don't wait to do anything about your VA claim until, you know, this is over because we can do everything right now. We can still provide the same services. So if you were going to send us a letter, send it. If you have... Um, evidence that you were submitting to support a claim, still send that to us. If you need it to talk to us about something other than coming into the office, you can still do that. You, like I said, that number 1-800-827-1000, call and talk to a counselor 
or go online into your e-benefits account or to va.gov if you're just searching for information. We can do everything. I really want to reiterate that, that we can do all of the things that we do when when the office is open. Uh, that's wonderful. It really is. Let's take a caller. Carl, hi. You're on America's Heroes Group. Yeah, I wanted to know about this uh, Blue Water Asian Orange uh, benefit. Mm-hmm. Go right ahead. You got and to- uh, how do I find out if I'm eligible for any part of that? Bridget. Ask him where he's calling yeah. from, Cliff. Pardon? Ask him where he's yeah, calling from. Where, where, where are you calling from, sir? I'm calling from uh, South Carolina. From South Carolina. Okay. Somebody well, wanna, Carl, if you don't yeah. if you don't know if you fall into that category, it depends on you know where you served and if you were on a ship, um, you know, twelve miles off the coast of uh, Vietnam in that perimeter. Um, but if you're not sure, then um, you know, like I said, you can call that one eight hundred number and you can see if you meet the criteria um, to apply for that. And then if you have you know any disabilities that are presumptive disabilities related to herbicide exposure then they can get that ball rolling for you. And okay. If you, okay, that's that 1-800-827-1000. That's it. 1-800-827-1000. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have proof that you were that you were within that 12-mile perimeter, we have an extensive library of, you know, ship logs, deck logs. You know, we can, we can research that information for you to get it to substantiate okay. your claim. All right. They're going to take okay. it. Okay. Yeah. That answers my question. That's Thank you great. very much. Glad you All right, called. Thanks, Carl. Right. right. Uh, yeah, you folks uh, are really taking care of it. That's for sure. 1 800 827 1000. That's the number, right? <clears throat> and uh, I just think it's great what you're able to track down on this. I want to thank you, Anna, John, Jeff. Thank you, folks, for giving us all this great information. We really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you having us on again. Yeah, yeah, evidently. Thank you again for having us. Oh, it's a a pleasure. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, evidently, there's somebody else. So, yeah, we, did you want to tell us anything before we close off, folks? Anything, Anna? No, I mean, just the last thing that I will say is, mm-hmm. you know, we're here to serve you guys, so mm-hmm. don't hesitate to reach out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And again, like Anna mentioned, uh, you know, if you if you even think you might fall into this category, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. by all means, give us a call. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we are uh, we work with, uh, you know, the military, the Department of Defense, uh, the National Archives. We will. Uh, do everything we can to research and find out if you were on a ship that may have uh, gone into that 12 mile, uh, 12 nautical mile distance from the coast. Uh, you know, it's it's our obligation and it's our duty to assist you in in finding that information. So if you think uh, that you may have been on a ship uh, that may have gone within that 12 nautical mile zone, uh, by all means, give us a call. Uh, you know, we'll start the process and and. Our counselors will be able to advise you and, and take your claim and move forward from there. You folks are great. That's really reaching out, and we really appreciate it. Thank you, the three of you, again.